Villawood Properties, premier partner of the Riverwood Football Netball Club. So good. So I get it. Alright. Welcome to it. <laughs> Welcome to episode 11 of The Tank. I'm your host, Ben Kay. On tonight's show, we'll review all the results of the weekend's game against Lansfield, and we'll catch up with uh, Josh Fez Ferraro and Nick Rednut Agnello. 60 seconds with Feats returns, and we'll bring you up to date with all going on around the club. Before we get into the show, on behalf of the Ripo family, we'd like to congratulate Jake Sutton and Brock Lant, who represented the AFL Goldfields against AFL FNQ on the weekend. With the boys running around, out, running out winners by 80 points at Kazali Stadium in Cairns. We are very proud of you guys. Okay, it's on with the show. In the seniors, Rip Tour 2013-133 defeated Lansfield 2-2-14. Luke Cannon and Eddie Whelan, four goals apiece. Dave Morris and Chris Lucas judge best to field. In the reserves, Rupert Twig, 13-14-92, defeated Lansfield three behinds, with Mark Young scoring three goals. Dean Hallowell and Jaden Bailey judge best to field, sees Rupert Twig move to 32 points on the ladder. In the under-19s, Riddle, 9-12-66, defeated Rupert Twig three goals, 12-30, with Alex Mercedi best on the ground. Rupert Twig now sitting second. Okay, we're here with the senior coach, Nick Ash, following a... Um uh, a good win today, a solid win today. Nick, your thoughts? Yeah, it was pretty solid. Lansfield obviously come out with uh, an intent to pressure us all day, which they did. Um, I thought that it was a really good contest. I think we uh, kept it uh, what we needed to do right throughout the four quarters and obviously come home with a nice last quarter and gave a bit of momentum for next week. Um, I thought the blokes who came in, we had seven changes last week's side. I thought all the blokes who came in this week all contributed really well. And uh, Dylan Dremel, one of those blokes who came in, was obviously our best player today as well, which was great. No, fantastic effort, mate. And Lansfield show there on the right track. Well, they are, they certainly are. Look, um, obviously, look on the Facebook and all the rest of it, they're playing locals and that, which is a great thing to have, I suppose. We're pretty lucky at Rupo, we've got a lot of locals on our side. I think we've got 20 odd juniors playing on the senior side, which is always good, and I think they're Heading in the right direction if that's what they're looking to do. Um, I think you know, flooding your, your youth and locals is a is a really good uh, a really good thing for the league and uh, for clubs like Lansfield to obviously go forward. Fantastic. We look forward to Centrals next week. Yeah, it'd be good to get back on our home deck. We haven't been there for a few weeks. Um, been quite wet, so we haven't really trained on it much either. So it'd be good to get out there and uh, get back playing on the home ground in front of the faithful. Terrific. Thanks for your time, Nick. No worries. Ah. Yeah. Tonight we welcome. Oh, shut up! <laughs> Tonight we welcome Josh Ferrara to the show. Thanks for coming in, mate. No worries, pal. Tell us about your Rupo career, where you play, and how things are going at the moment. Um, played at Rupo my whole life. Um, my career's going alright, bar a few injuries. And um, yeah, enjoying it at the moment. Beautiful. So tell everyone, what do you do for a living? I'm a cheese boy. What does cheese boy do? <laughs> Uh, run big machines <laughs> that make cheese, yeah? Yeah, pretty right. much. Yeah. Very nice, yeah. very nice and very boring. <laughs> Tell us about your Rupo journey to date. <coughs> what are your accomplishments? Tell us. Um, uh, won four flags, one with uh, Rodney, gave me the uh, nice call up in the 18s, and then got a few runner runners up in the juniors because uh, yeah, just couldn't beat Sunbury. So, yeah, yeah. those are probably my highlights. Yep, beautiful. Uh, now, <coughs> your nickname is Flamunda. How and when did this arrive? Um, arrived last year uh, from Dean Putt. Um, the big man? Yeah, the big man, the big putt sack. Um, probably can't really say this on uh, camera, but it's got to do with um, cheese and another part of the body that I can't really say. So we'll leave it at that. Good, I like it. Yeah. So, and <coughs> there's been talk around on the socials, around the club, you have a uh, new girlfriend. How did that happen? Looking like yourself. Looking like myself. <laughs> um, no, no, just happened. Yeah. Just charmed it. Yeah, just, just, just use the first charm. A cheesy Fez. Oh, yeah, good job. First, charm. first senior game was against who, and what are your memories of that day? Uh, first senior game was against Woodend. Um, uh, it was with like all like uh, Noel McGovern, 
um, Leroy Brennan, all them boys. Um, and yeah, had a good win. And then, yeah, it's got to go. So it was nice. Very yeah, nice. Very nice. What are your expectations for the remainder of the season this year? Um, well, hopefully we can just go that one step further than last year. Get that flag. So, hoping for a flag this year. If all goes to plan. So yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. Very nice. Now there's um, a few more murmurs. There's a few murmurs about you around the club. There's a few more that you had a day out exactly at the uh, day out at the footy with uh, Sugar Kane Murphy and uh, Dean Putty Putt. Can you tell us how the day panned out? That's all right because your, your parents are overseas, so it's all good. All right. Um, went for a uh, decided to go to the footy um, Geelong Collingwood on a Sunday. It was Mother's Day. And, um, Perfect day to go to football. So yep. the plan was to be home by seven for a Mother's Day dinner. Any normal person would. Yep. yep. Um, started having a couple of beers. Um, got into a fight with a couple of Irish blokes. Um, and then ended up in a cop station where my um, girlfriend ended up coming to pick me up. So the girlfriend you just uh, yeah kind of so yep. yeah so she's a keeper. Yeah, 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 she's done well. She's sticking around. Yeah. She's a keeper. Yeah, so from what, yeah, so I didn't really make the Mother's Day dinner. How was Mum? And uh, was Mum a bit angry? Yeah, she was. <laughs> she doesn't actually know the full story of this, so I've kind of just rolled myself by saying all of this. Yeah, you'll find and out very soon, I believe. Sorry, Papa Cheese. <laughs> all right, well, thanks for joining us, Fez, and good luck for the rest of the year. No worries, mate. Cheers. Thank you. And in the netball, A grade, Rupert Wood, 69, defeated Broadford, 21. Unfortunately, we have no details to hand at this point in time. In the B grade, Rupert Wood, 43, defeated Lattisfield, 22, with Hannah Keane scoring 28 goals and Emily Katona, best on ground honours. In the C grade, Rupert Wood, 27, defeated Lattisfield, 18, with Danielle Scudamalia, Netting 16 goals with Holly Keating, best on court. In the under 19s, Rupert with 55, defeated Lancefield 3, with Hannah Keane scoring 25 goals and Eloise Freeman, best on court. The ladders sees Rupert Wood in A grade sitting in second position. In B grade, Rupert would occupy first position, C grade, third position, and in the under 19s, Rupert Wood sits at top of the tables. Keep up the good work, girls. Welcome to the tank, Nick Agnello. Thanks for joining me. Thank you very much. Tell us, Nick, what do you do for a living? Uh, I do logistics, and so I do like freight forwarding, and we ship stuff around the world and air freight stuff around the world. So sounds nice and cruisy. Yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, tell us about your Rupo journey to date. Uh, Rupo journey to date. Uh, well, I made the move across from Sunbury in juniors, and uh, I've been playing at Rupo probably since under 18s, and uh, lucky enough to win a flag in the under 18s. Also. So, yeah. Beautiful. Very good. Uh, this is a while back now. You played your first senior game in the Vapa some years back. And if your memory's good, who was it against? And what are your memories of that day? Uh, it would have been 2011. And it would have been against uh, a team called Ajax. Uh, they were undefeated. Um, and we ended up beating them by two goals that day. So it turned out to be a good first well, thanks game. for big Nick Agnello, eh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> All right, you have the nickname, the Crimson Menace, also known as Darth Maul. Can you please tell everyone why the hell that is your nickname? First I've ever heard of that, <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> I've been called it, don't know why. <laughs> so, your no guess, idea, no your, idea your, why. Your guess, your guess is as good as mine, so no, nah, can't tell you. you. Might have to get Rodney Williams in for to explain that one. <laughs> uh, you've been played it. Oh, damn it. Start again. <laughs> we'll start again. <laughs> All right. You've played with and been coached by many here at the Tank. Who are your standouts along the way? Uh, I'd probably say, obviously, the standout is probably my first senior coach would have been uh, Gab Kerr. Um, learned a lot under him and with that sort of group of guys back then. 
Um, along the way, there's, uh, that's my memory now. <laughs> there's uh, been a few, so we've been uh, Dave Barry, BJ, uh, Ashy. So um, yeah, there have been a fair few there. So they've all been pretty, pretty good to me, and um, yeah, can't really uh, say who the standouts are. No sucking up, you don't want to do any sucking up? <laughs> no, no, I won't do any of that. Alright, what are your favourite memories of your special host today, Ben K? <laughs> Did you put that question in, didn't you? No, I definitely <laughs> didn't, I can promise you that. Ben K, what can I say about you, mate? Oh. All good things. Yeah, we won't go there, but nah. Good bloke, and uh, I'll just leave it at that, sometimes. No favourite memories, that's just nah. enough. <laughs> no favourite memories, yeah, hopefully that's... this year at Footy Trip. Yeah, beautiful. Alright, before you go, who would you least like to room with on footy trip and why? <laughs> I'm going to say, just because this person said it to me, it's going to be you. <laughs> yeah. You stitch me up, I'm going to stitch you up. <laughs> yeah, you got to explain why though. Oh, because you stink. Yeah, uh, Simple enough. as that. <laughs> All right, thanks for taking your time to speak with niggas. Have a good night. Enjoy. Right, you too, mate. Cheers. More Fab Engineering, platinum sponsor of the Rippertwood Football Netball Club. Pinnacle Print Group, platinum sponsor of the Rippertwood Football Netball Club. Welcome to this week's. Uh, yeah, we'll start that one again. <laughs> Welcome to this week's episode of 60 Seconds with Feet. I've got my guest, uh, Matt Castle. Alright, how's it going? How's it going, mate? Uh, first of all, what do you do for a job? I uh, work at McDonald's in Sunbury. In McDonald's? Yeah, I'll see you in the drive through there sometime. Yeah. 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 Looking to get out of there anytime soon? Uh, no, I'll probably stay there for a couple more years, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You got a Rippo career highlight? Uh, probably, um. Mm. No. You just don't. <laughs> probably start again. <laughs> no. Uh, which AFL players are you your model your game on? Uh, probably Patrick Cripps, I feel Patrick like. Patrick Cripps? Yeah. a lot like Paddy Cripps, yeah. And Craig's Valentine, I thought. Oh, uh, no, Paddy Cripps. Craig's yeah. Valentine, yeah. You got a celebrity crush? Megan Fox. Megan Fox? Yeah. Goal for you. Nice. Uh, are you going to go on a footy trip? And if you are, um, where would you like to go? Uh, I think I do Brisbane. Brisbane? So we've got to talk to the parents a bit. <laughs> Uh, who at the club would you choose to kick up the sign to win? Uh, probably Kyle Tucker. Kyle Tucker? I feel he's a pretty good show, yeah. yeah, yeah. Not me? No. No, no. Alright, and uh, who's the most hated 19th player at the club? Uh, probably Boyd Nelda. Boyd Nelda, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'd think so too, yeah. yeah. He's not very liked. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for joining me, mate. <laughs> BT is coming to the tank on Wednesday, July 18th. Tickets are 30 bucks. Get along to what is going to be an absolute cracker of a night. Tickets available through the club. See Brad or whoever's in charge. <laughs> Don't forget the dinner dance on July 28th. Get your tables organised and book as there are a limited number of seats left. See Lauren as soon as possible. The Rupo Bonanza, old muzzer, he's organising that. It's on the August the 11th with $8,000 indoor prizes. See Muzza to secure your ticket and they are selling fast. It's a bit more to read, I forgot. <laughs> Cut that. And we'll... <laughs> After the final credits roll, stay tuned as we are sharing special features to present more information on our corporate partners. And part... <laughs> you picked the wrong host, man. You picked the wrong host. I'll start that again. After the final credits roll, stay tuned as we are sharing special features to present more information on our corporate partners and their businesses. Make sure they make sure you some there. <laughs> <laughs> Take seven. <laughs> <laughs> After the final credits roll, stay tuned as we are sharing special features to present more information on our corporate partners and their businesses. Make sure you support them as they are crucial to the survival of our great club. Okay, well that's it from the tank for another week. Stick around for the RDFN NL footy show and Nettie shows with Tara and Yindi. BT is coming to Rupo. Oh boy, wowee. Uh, Roby Bryan here, and uh, yes, just looking around the room. So I, think, I think I can see someone. We're just going to.
Well, it Properties, we create communities with fun as our inspiration. Not only do we create vibrant communities, we support communities. Whether the ones we create ourselves or the broader community and throughout, we do so with that unique Villawood combination of energy, creativity and community. Mom. Can we live here? We're about creating environments where kids of all ages can be kids and have fun. We create environments where you can put yourself on life stage and get involved. Our communities and events are places where you can meet your heroes, whether sporting heroes or superheroes where there are no barriers to fight and where you can fly high where the ordinary and the everyday becomes the extraordinary and where belonging and entertainment are the rule not the exception Billawood Properties live a fun filled life this place is the best G'day and welcome to another massive edition of the RDFNL Footy Show. Looking ahead to the upcoming round of Senior Footy, my name's Jendi. I'm joined by Tara Murray. Uh, certainly an interesting uh, goal kicking contest earlier on the week. It uh, was, and make sure you tune into the vision. We have put, yeah. It has been put up on the RDFL Facebook and been. website and see whether Yendi got the job done or was he quite convincingly beaten. <laughs> It was good to get down there a while and it was a fantastic night. Uh, we've got some great games coming up uh, this weekend. Uh, we've got Wooden, Heskett and Riddle. This is going to be massive. This is an exciting round of matches. We've seen a lot of one-sided matches at times. Look, there obviously could be still a couple, but I think we're starting to see some of those sides who are around each other on the ladder and where they sort of sit. And we could see some quite interesting matches. And, and, this, and obviously this kicks it off. You've got Wooden versus Riddle. You've got Riddle, who is the hottest team in this competition at the moment, is absolutely smashing everyone they're playing in recent weeks against Wooden, Heskett who has lost three games in a row. So for the Hawks, they need this win to get back on track, especially when they face Wallen in the next week as well. So they lose this week, they've lost four in a row, and then you've got the ladder leaders the following week. Could be um, outside the top six if they're not um, careful. They're the Hawks. Yeah, it's looming uh, a bit of danger. I'm going to do a bit of cross-league promotion here. Uh, I did see a game on the weekend involving Bacchus Marsh and Lake Windaree. Lake Windaree, probably in the same calibre of the Hawks and Bacchus Marsh, who have been belting sides like Riddle. Bacchus Marsh the hottest team in the, uh, the Ballarat comp at, at this present time, but Lake Wing Dere actually took the game up to Bacchus Marsh by playing good, hard, physical footy on their home deck. Now, 
translate it back to this competition, I think if Riddle can play some good physical intimidating footy, um, I think that could be a chance. And I'm not saying they'll be over-optimistic, but Bacchus Marsha are in the exact same mould as Riddle. Plenty of goal kickers and uh, and have been inflicting pain on everyone. Look, I think Riddle's actually in a lot better form than Bacchus Marsha. I did mm. see them the previous week against the Sunbury Lions, and they're playing good for two, three quarters, but they're not playing four-quarter football. At the moment, we're seeing the Bombers play three-quarter football. They're absolutely smashing everyone they um, are facing. So you need the Hawks need to play that hard contested football keep it to a low scoring game mm. we're seeing these blowouts with the bombers we need they need to get a low scoring game to keep themselves in the contest because if it's a shootout i think the um the bombers have too many options so if you can keep it to a low scoring game we've seen the hawks already set up upset diggers rest this season so they do have that potential when they are performing at their best to knock off one of these top sides i think riddle um last weekend uh, i know it wasn't uh you know taking nothing away from rock bank but wood and hesket on the verge of a, of, a, of a finals campaign but they, uh, Riddle got 14 goals out of two midfielders, an in and under type and an outside midfielder uh, with, with Hayden Ross and uh, Matt Panuccio. So those, those are guys are in good quality form and they're playing more in the middle of the ground. Exactly. And the Bombers have plenty of options up forward. Like You're probably sit looking at your key forwards through the Hawks to get the job done. Where the Bombers have those key forwards like at, as a Nolan. Nolan's probably their key one down there. But then they've also got, as you said, you've got Ross, you've got um, Panuccio. You've also, you look, you've got Dylan Tarkson who can kick a bag as well and you've got a few others there so I think the Bombers have more options so they need to shut some of them down um, to if the Hawks are any chance of getting the win. Yeah it should be uh, an interesting uh, it's, it'd be a great indication to see where the Hawks are at this year. Yeah definitely and that, it's a must win game for them this week. Yeah, the, uh, the big one being, the, being played for the McDonald's Cup with a lot of uh, great things happening on the day and of course uh, McDonald's are proud sponsors of the RDFNL. Uh, we've got tickets rest at Sunbury Kangaroos uh, a, a great rivalry between uh, two cross freeway Two teams over the other side of the bridge. It is, and obviously you mentioned that um, it's the Ronald McDonald House Cup for, for Victoria and Tasmania. So the two clubs are looking to raise money for Ronald McDonald House and the good work that Ronald McDonald House does do. So I know both have um, been involved in McDonald's. I think McDonald's sponsors both of these clubs as well. So they're looking, there'll be team rattling, there'll be activities on the day, there'll be a lot of that. So look, there'll be a little bit more come out about that in the next couple of days, I think. But it's a good initiative to raise um, money for something that's valuable in the community. And I think a lot of people, obviously, you look at Summary, Diggers Rest Mass and Rangers, if you've got these run on McDonald houses in the city, these are probably perfect for um, people who live out this way because they do have that travel from getting into this city if you've got kids staying in the hospital. So you look at that there, but then it's probably going to be an interesting game on field. You've got Summary Kangaroos coming off us. They absolutely smashed um, Broadford. And then you've got Diggers Rest who got the job done against Mountain Centrals. So Diggers Rest probably the last two weeks of got the job done, hasn't been the prettiest one, but they're doing what they have to do against the Sunbury Kangaroos who probably need a win if they want to keep their final spot, al final hopes alive. Kangaroos a chance? Look, I think Diggers Rest will be too strong. I think Diggers Rest has too much depth, but you never know with the Kangaroos. They did knock off Wood and Heskett a couple of weeks ago and Wood and Heskett knocked off Diggers Rest. So yeah. you need you need Sunbury Kangaroos um, better players standing strong. You've got Josh, Josh Burgess who comes in in really good form. He's kicked eight goals. You've got Mitch Streif who's had a couple of really good games. He kicked five on the weekend. And look, and some of those players for the Summary Kangaroos who haven't had a lot of senior opportunities are starting to have an impact. I think Braden, Will uh, Braden Wilson is one. He's played a lot of reserves the last few years. I think he's been named in the best for the Kangaroos in three or three of the four senior games he's played. And Jamie Cuff's another one who, look, we all know what Jamie Cuff can do, but we thought he was only playing reserves and he keeps um, having an impact at senior level. So and some of those other players need to step up along with the stars. Yeah, you're spot on there. And I think traditionally they, these sort of fixtures, they're not high scoring either, which will actually suit the kangaroos. It is, and that's it. You look at it. The, if it's a shootout, the boroughs, I think, yeah. have too much depth across the board. But then you say that the kangaroos scored 200 points on the weekend, so they do yeah. have a number of different goal kickers there. But I think, yeah, if it's a low-scoring affair, that probably suits the kangaroos better and gives them a better chance of um, knocking off it and getting an upset win. To continue the trend of big matches uh, in this upcoming round, uh, we've got Wallen and Macedon. Yeah, one and two on the ladder. Yeah. So obviously this is probably, you, you look, there's a number of good games on paper, but this is probably the biggest of the round. So you've got one and two on the ladder. You've got Wallen who have basically dominated nearly every team they've played. And then you've got Masson and who just seem to be going along pretty slowly, pretty quietly. They are under the radar. They are under the radar, but that's how they wanted it. They, they didn't think they'd be playing their best footy until the second half of the season. And you say that they're sitting second on the ladder and they're yet to do that. For the Magpies, this is a really, really good test. And for them, they, they're not knocked off Rupertswood a few weeks ago in a close match and I can't see this being a 
massively high scoring one. I think it'll be a pretty close contest. I think the Magpies probably have been in the better form of the two teams and they have shown that they can knock off those top sides where that's probably where the one downside it has been for the Cats this season. They haven't been able to beat those top sides when they've been in full flight. But they really haven't sort of played their best footy either. So is this going to be the week where they do unleash and play the quality footy that they, we know they can play? It is quite possible. It could be. That's what we're sort of expecting, that the Cats sort of to play the footy they played last year at some point this year. Whether it's not it's this week, I don't know. They're sort of launching into that second half of the season. It'd be the perfect opportunity to. And then I think they'll be equal on points with um, Wongan on top of the ladder there. So the massive opportunity for the Cats to show where they are at this season. But I think the Magpies will still be too strong. Definitely a game well worth watching if you can get out to the Green Hill Reserve, I think. Uh, I think I'll join you that one. Well, and we'll win. Uh, Broughton and Romsey, Romsey. This is uh, this is their season on the line here. We. Yeah, we can confidently go and say they'll, they'll win, but it's how they win will be important. Exactly. And you look, if results go their way, they'll be in the top six by the end of the week. Obviously, equal on points with Wood and Heskett. If the Hawks lose to the Bombers, like if on form, you'd expect them to. That puts the Redbacks back in that top six. So, look, they'd be wanting a big win. You're seeing these other sides around them on the ladder, like your Melson Central's, Sunbury Kangaroos, your Wood and Heskett. They're smashing these bottom sides. Romsey has to do the same thing there. Probably the key for Broadford, that they need to try and shut down Jack O'Sullivan. I think he's been named the Redbacks best in their last four games and I think he'd probably be up there in the Bowen medal mm. um, voting as well so that's probably one key that Broford need to look him shut down shut him down because he's in, been in brilliant form the last month and he's been kicking goals as well Look, that, we've been hyping it up, but goal-kicking midfielders has been crucial in this competition lately. And he's another one we, we didn't mention um, earlier in the week. He is perfectly another one who can do that. He will kick his four, he can kick his four or five goals, and then he does the job in the middle as well. So he's damaging all around, and he's someone who, if you let him go, he can be best on ground every single week. And it's the sort of ground that would suit Romsey as well, very similar to uh, to their home deck at Romsey Park. It's a sort of not, it's a fast deck. It's... Um, yeah, it'll definitely it'll definitely suit them well. So we know Roms will win that one. But uh, uh, the next game, I, th- I mean, we we talk about the top two sides in the competition. Let's this one is going to be a, an absolute cracker. This is going to be harder to tip than Wallen and Macedon. Um, we've got Lansford and Rockbank. Exactly. I think this is probably the hardest game to yeah. tip <laughs> the whole round. So yeah. look, obviously we've we've got two crackers in Woodend and Riddle, and then you've also got Wallen and Macedon. But this is going to be a cracker as well. You've got two sides who have, are both towards the bottom of the ladder. They've both only won one match. Mm. and both against Broadford. So this game could quite easily go either way. And they're both young. Both these clubs have stripped back of what they're looking at doing and focusing on bringing the talent through in the clubs and um, starting from scratch. Obviously, Rockbank's probably a couple of years advanced in that. It's going to be interesting whether that reflects on the ground. Who wins this one? Look, I think Rockbank will. Mm. And I... I'm, don't know why. Yeah. I just think Rock yeah. Bank will. And look, they'll set themselves for this one as both these sides will set themselves and go, this is a really winnable match. I know for them, scoreboard doesn't matter. It's about what they do on the field. And look, you, you started to see the last few weeks, the Rams' young leaders have really stood up. I, I believe Alan Greenwood actually captained the side on the weekend yep. after previously captaining the Rams in the under-18s as well. So you've got him, you've got Jordan and Mitch Badgartner has sort of stood up, Ricky Cameron. You're starting to get those young guys really stepping up and showing what they can do. And I think they might be too good for the Tigers. Yeah, I'm going to go the other way. I think Lansfield will be too strong on the, on the day. I mean, you've got Chris Collins who's a, who's a star in the midfield. You've got the Malone boys. Uh, you've got uh, Giacomo Cremesco who, uh, who was a gun in the under-18s going back a few years ago. He's starting to make a bit of a presence. There's a few other guys in there. I think Lansfield, on a heavier track, um, will be better suited and I think they'll win by maybe four or five goals. Look, I think, that, yeah, this could quite easily be the closest game of game of the round. Yeah. So it be quite an interesting one to watch there. Spot on there. And the final game, we've got Rupert's Wood and Melton Centrals. Look, the Sharks should win this quite easily, but it'll be interesting. It's another one of those games for Melton Centrals to see how much they've improved and how much they've closed the gap. We look down at um, down at the sh- um, the tank. It can be sometimes it can be a high scoring ground. Other times, depends on the conditions, it can be a pretty low scoring one. So if you're Centrals, you want to probably keep it to a low scoring one because you look the Sharks have got too many options up forward. Um, if it gets into a high scoring shootout and should win quite convincingly, they probably need Dylan Weir to step up for Centrals if there are a chance. He only I, I don't I think he kicked one on the weekend. Mm. If, if that and you need him kicking consistent frequent bags of goals if you to do that I think but I think the Sharks will be too strong yeah I think if uh, if Central's get within maybe seven goals they'll be very happy with that I mean we've, they got within nine goals of Diggers Rest last week so Diggers Rest are one of the premier sides so I think as you mentioned earlier on a week that's that's a good positive for them yeah, it is, and obviously they're closing the gap they are showing they are improving and looking either side's not not on target 
Melbourne Centrals will at least push them for half, three quarters of a game, and they will eventually start getting wins against these top sides if they don't, if they're not, um, the other sides don't come in switched on. Shaping up to be a massive round of senior football in the RDF. Now, all thanks to our friends at On Time Delivery Solutions. Tara, thanks so much for uh, for joining us, uh, and we'll be checking out the Star Weekly for all the magnificent stories that you guys do. It's uh, it makes for great reading. Uh, some of the best in the business. So, really looking forward to it. Thanks for having me.